Growing up, I lived in a small suburban town in New Jersey where everyone knew me as the girl who does art. My name is Lydia Guadagnoli and I am an illustrator. I love to write comics and design their characters. I had a supportive group of teachers, friends, and family who told me I would become a great illustrator one day. It never really crossed my mind that there were thousands of other kids being told the same thing, some of them much more talented than I. This year, my first assignment was a self-portrait. I could practically hear the praise my professor was going to give me. Well, the next class, after working for 20 hours on the assignment, my professor looked at it for about three seconds and moved to the next piece. Once he finished seeing the art, he faced the class and said five of our names. The names I just called are the ones who will get jobs in this industry. My name was not called. What my professor said put me in a state of shock. I had never been told that I was not good enough. I had decided that next class, I would really make something that would knock his socks off. But next class came and I got the same result, a three second glance and a lecture about how no one will hire me. He suggested that I look at more art to see how the professionals drew. So that day, I did just that. With each new assignment, I found my art looking like everything from a Michelangelo painting to a 1970 anime cartoon. But none of these pieces had any essence of me. Putting each piece up next to each other, they looked as if each one was done by a different person. I had lost my artistic identity. The yearn to create had left me. Even when I would sketch for fun, all I could think about was what my professor would say. My slump lasted for months with no sign of stopping. However, recently during my history class, I started a doodle of a character I had been drawing since high school. Only this character looked different now. She had a face of accurate proportion like a da Vinci portrait. Her outline was fluid like a girl on a mooka poster, and her clothes were made of intricate patterns like a Clint painting. Then I realized, without even thinking, I was able to apply my favorite artist's styles and turn them into a way of drawing that worked for me. The battle of finding my artistic voice and making art that was distinct had finally reached a compromise. I realized that developing my voice required patience and practice. It's impossible to choose how to draw. Not every line sketched is going to be museum worthy and many mistakes need to be made. During my latest critique, I watched my professor's eyes survey the work. My heart skipped when he saw mine. He saw and got closer, taking in the details. He looked at me and nodded with a smile on his face. For as long as I could remember, I wanted to design characters and storyboards for movies and television. I was drawing my own movie scenes since I was able to hold a pencil. I found it fascinating how camera angles could make or break a movie and how a slight adjustment in color could completely change the mood of a scene. I now have the confidence that I can move forward and eventually reach my career goals. I am not ready to stop improving. There are always more techniques I need to practice and much more art I need to see. I will never give up trying to be the best I can be. That is what I believe.